Hello everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at TeacherMade.com. This website is free to use for teachers and it will convert any of your PDFs or picture files into digital activities. And this is probably the easiest way to make a digital activity from a PDF. So, let's take a look. To get started, we'll go to TeacherMade.com. There's no payment that you have to do, this is a free website to use. So once you get here, you can do the sign up now button up in the top right. Or if you've been here before, you can go ahead to log in or return to app. From here, we can create our worksheets. And basically all we have to do is go find any sort of PDF or picture file that we already have that we would normally print out and give to our students, but we can give them out digitally through this website. So let's go ahead and put in a digital worksheet here. If, for example, you find a PDF, something like this here, so I have this geography worksheet. And of course, you know, under normal circumstances, I would take this worksheet and go ahead and print it out and just simply give it to my students. If I want to do this digitally, I can still take this PDF and then if I go and put it into teachermade.com, then I can make it into a digital activity. So let's look at how to do that. From teachermade.com, We'll go into let's get started. We'll give a name to our worksheet. I'll just call this one geography worksheet. Put it in a description if we need to. And then at the bottom, we'll choose a file. And I'll go find that activity and attach it in. And notice it gives you a little preview of what the page will look like. Another thing to mention real quick is if you have a PDF that's multiple pages or includes a answer key with it, what you can also do is pick and choose which pages are going to be included. So you might have something like this. So you might have something like this where uh, you have two pages and one of them is the answer key and you just simply click on the one that you don't want and notice the red outline is gone and that one won't be included in your activity but for our purposes let's go ahead and use this geography worksheet so once we have our files chosen we'll go to the bottom and click create worksheet that will take us into our worksheet editor from here we can add in whatever type of activity that we want so as we can see uh, up along the top toolbar here we have a bunch of different types of activities that we can have inputted into our digital worksheet so we can have a short answer we can have a drop down we can give students multiple choices we can have an open answer question kind of like a large paragraph answer you can do a matching activity you can do a true and false you can do a multiple choice question you can do a checkbox question you can do a, what's called a hotspot. You can insert some math equations. You can do a traditional text box if you want to add something to the PDF that students cannot interact with. You can also have images, and then there's also a color block or eraser. Then once you're ready, you simply just pick whichever type of question that you want to do and just draw it wherever you want on the page. So for this assignment, let's take a look at what the first questions are here. So this one's a map activity, and it's going to have students match the letter to the continent or the ocean. And so in this case, what I'll probably want to do is have little fill-in boxes for each one of the uh, 12 first questions here. So to do that, I'll do this first option that says short answer. And then I simply just draw out wherever I want the text box to be. From there, we simply rinse and repeat. So then once we have our activity made, we can even set correct answers so it can auto grade for us. So to do that, we simply click on one of the activities. Notice up in the top, it says edit short answer. 
Of course, this I put in a short answer question. But if you put in a multiple choice or a checkbox or whatever other type of question, it'll let you edit from there as well. But then we'll go into edit short answer. From here, we can set how many points this activity is worth. And then we can set our correct answer. So in this case, I'll have to look at the map here. So North America is L. And so I'll go into our editor. And correct answer is L. And you can decide from here whether or not answers must match the case, upper, upper or lower, to be correct. And we save changes. And then we simply, again, rinse and repeat from there. Up next, let's take a look at doing a multiple choice question. So of course, depending on what kind of worksheet you find, you'll use the different tools for the case of this worksheet we're using today. There's basically just a fill in first half and then the second half is just multiple choice questions. So uh, let's finish out this worksheet with multiple choice. So we'll come up to our toolbar again, but this time we'll go and find our multiple choice icon. From here, we can pick how many choices we're gonna have. Now, as of right now, uh, if I choose four choices like there are for this worksheet here, I can't separate them in any way to make them line up with the way that these, um, these questions are written. So you have two options. The first option is you can recreate the, the options um, with a text box in conjunction with these multiple choice boxes. So I could sit here and make the multiple choice boxes and then also make a text box where I write in the, the same answers, basically just cover them up off to the side, something like that. Or alternatively, what I could also do is instead of doing all four uh, multiple choice questions at once, I could do two choices and then just cover up the choices onto the side here like this. and then I can re repeat that for both pairs for every question. So of course, when you have a, a separate multiple choice options like that, you can technically set multiple correct answers, which in this case, of course, we don't really want. So for this first question, which of these continents is closest to Africa, Antarctica, North America, Europe, or Australia? The right answer is Europe. So we can cl actually just click right on to our little bubble there and answer the question. Notice uh, I clicked North America over here on the side, so that one's still an option. Once you click an option, you can't unclick one. So I can just simply delete this and then add in a new one again and cover those back up. And just be careful not to click over any of the circles. Okay, this will still set the correct answer to be Europe over here, um, but technically it will show up as an incompleted activity because this multiple choice question is not answered. Then just like before, you simply rinse and repeat, put in the rest of your activities. Again, for those multiple choice questions, you just simply click on the bubble of the right answer and that sets the correct answer. You can also change your point values and things if you need to. Again, going back up to that edit button, once you single click on one of your activities, from there, of course, you can still change your point value and that sort of thing. Uh, last couple things here to finish up this activity. Um, you'll notice I have on this particular worksheet, there's an answers like spot over on the right hand side. For our purposes, I really don't need that. I don't want kids to be confused when they go and do this activity. So I'm gonna erase all this stuff. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to our little erase button. And this will have us insert this little color block onto our page. And basically it's just a big white rectangle and we can just use that to cover up anything that we need. So I'm gonna do that and stretch it out to the size that I need. And there we go. So you can see this kind of blocks off that side there. And again, students aren't going to know that there was anything there in the first place. It's all blocked off now. Once we are finished with preparing our worksheet, then we can do a preview before we go and send it out to our students. So to do a preview, we'll come up to the View tab at the top, and we'll do Preview. And from here, this is exactly what the students will see. So we'll scroll down a little bit, 
and we can go ahead and answer in our boxes. So let's go ahead and just fill out this worksheet real quick. So we just finished our activity, we hit check answers, and now this gives us our score. Up in the top we can see our total score, and then we can see all the options that we got right and wrong, and we can see all of our different answers there. Now as the teacher, once you assign this out to students, you can decide whether or not they're going to see which answers they missed, or if they're going to see the right answers, you can, you can set all that stuff. So let's take a look at how to do that. So once you finished making your digital activity and you did a preview to make sure all the questions look right, then of course it's time to actually get it out to your students. So once you're all ready, we go up to File up at the top and we can just simply click Close. Everything in here auto saves, so there's no saving that you have to click. From here, it'll take us to this kind of dashboard and then we can see we have this uh, big blue button down here that says Create an Assignment. And from here, we can do some options. So first thing is we can uh, decide our student sign-in options. So you can have them sign in just with a name or an ID, or you can ha even have them do a Google account or both. You do have to you do have to pick one of them. Um, so you, again, you can either have them do a Google sign-in, or and or you can have them do a uh, username or ID. For my, our, for my purposes, I'll do a Google sign-in. Then you have some additional options here. You can uh, allow students to see the score, and that can include, if you decide, if you want to see them, have them be able to look at their total score only, whether they can show the score and how they answered, or you can have them see the student score, how they answered, and the correct answers. So you can pick whichever one that you want here. So for my purposes, maybe I'll do the middle one where I allow students to see the score that they got and how they answered. And then at the bottom here, you can decide whether or not to show or hide the toolbars from the students. Um, when a student is answering, there will be a toolbar at the top that lets them do drawings and insert stuff. If you want them to be able to do that, you can have that on. If not, you can have that turned off. Then again, once we're ready, we go ahead down to the bottom and do Create Assignment. From here, we can go ahead and either grab the URL or go and share it right to Google Classroom. For our purposes, let's go ahead and do right to Google Classroom. From here, it'll ask us which classroom to put it into. I'll go ahead and do my example Google Classroom. Notice it gives us a very familiar looking page if you're used to Google Classroom. And we simply put in the assignment title. Put in whatever instructions that we want, put in whatever point values and due dates and all that good stuff as we normally do, and then we simply click assign. And now it's ready for our students to go and do. Now let's look at the student side for what it will look like for them to go and do this activity. So here we are on the student's perspective of Google Classroom, and of course we see this PDF geography activity, and then here's the link that will go over to this activity and because the teacher said sign in with Google they will have this option here begin with Google and then from here now they're ready to go in and fill out this assignment just like we saw in that preview so let's go ahead and do this assignment Again, when the students finish answering all the questions, they'll simply go down to either Save for Later or I'm Done at the bottom. This pop-up may come up if you have some uh, multiple choice questions like we talked about, where some questions are kind of split like this, like two and two. It's perfectly okay. They'll look through the worksheet and realize, hey, I don't have any other missing questions. You could also, again, when you're creating this, put in a little text box note saying that. But anyway, they'll hit OK on the pop-up, and they'll see that their worksheet is completed. And again, because I set uh, the settings for they're able to see their score and how they answered, now they can go through and look at how they did. So the student got an 
we missed a couple of questions in that in that first kind of matching part and then we can see we missed a question uh, down in our multiple choice um, again as the teacher we'll be able to go back and review that so let's take a look at this assignment from the teacher side again once we have all of our work turned in from our students we can go back and look at how they did so to do that we simply go back up to teachermade.com and go into our login return to app button then we'll go into whatever worksheet that we need in my case here's my geography worksheet then under assignments we click on the activity again and this will give us the summary page showing all of our students the score that they got and their submission date and if I want to look at how individual students did on their worksheet, I can even click on their score and I'll see exactly what they put on their own pages. So here's this activity that my student did for me and how he responded. So again, I can see exactly how he responded to all of our questions. Then of course, I can take whatever score that the student earned and go put it into my gradebook. And then I'm done. I want to show one more thing before we wrap up this video. If you assign out this worksheet to students and do not require them to do the sign in with Google, there will be a, a, just a, basically a name field for them to use. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So when you create a assignment, you can decide whether or not, again, to use the name or ID option or the Google account option. When we create that, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to my clipboard and I'll sign in with a different account. And this is what students will see when they get that link that goes to this activity. They'll simply just have a name box for them to type in their name. Then they can simply go in and do their activity just like normal. Okay. From the teacher side, you will see whatever student names uh, that students have typed in. Okay. So if you're not doing sign in with Google, that's what the option will look like if students are going to do a type in name option. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.